Where are you running Aragorn? And he's gonna be dead. I'm gonna try to control them now with the with the warm tongue. They will eat. Watch, watch, watch. However. What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanas, my name is Shanks and today we are going to cast the finals of the winner bracket in the World Championship 2022 for BFMU1 on the Fetch 2.2 on the beautiful map Mering Stream. It's a 1v1 between the Green Rohan player Fishy and the White Isengard player, the White Hand Shanks. Yes, it's me, but I was not able to comment it while playing this because it's the finals and I wanted to be focused. So Isengard opening with a Uruk Pit and a Furnace. I think it's the best opening you can actually do against a good faction like Rohan or Gondor with the Isengard faction, because even if you lose a settlement outside, you have still a furnace that, you know, keeps, keeps you kind of in the game. And you are most likely gonna lose a settlement outside against Rohan, which is able to spam lots of peasants from the farms inside, but also outside. So you can recruit them quite cheap and also quite fast for only 120 resources. So basically, every single farm from Rohan is acting like a barracks Rohan can use to dominate the early game. And it's gonna indeed recruit even more peasants and to be honest while playing this game i forgot about the settlement here in front of my face and you know it's not fair it's not good so the plan is to keep recruiting uruks it's very important if you have to make a choice between you know recruiting uruks or building additional furnace you need to keep recruiting more uruks this is important because of two reasons reason number one is you need to recruit at bare minimum five urukai to get the uruk to level two and that's gonna give you a chance to recruit berserker or the pikeman and reason number two, it keeps you kind of in the game and you have units to fight with. So with Warchant, Uruks are way stronger. They can actually 1v2, even 1v3 against Peasants. And for that reason, spam, 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 spam. Rohan in the meantime has untied settlements, which is kind of normal. Because Rohan, you know, has no pressure on him. He's all about to attack me all the, all the time. And the plan is to stall. I forgot about the settlement completely. There comes the Hobbit, Merirok, Brandybok. And he's gonna also capture this one in the, in the front. And the stable is already building up for Fishy. And my eco is not looking good by all means. I have just a Uruk Pit level 2 and a Furnace. The plan is, I know I'm a, in a very bad spot. So I, need, I know that I need to creep to actually get some money and to get back into the game. And in this game, I will showcase you how important the creeping actually is when you're behind. And how helpful this can be if you want to get, you know, if you want to find a way to get back into the game. So the farm here is going to be eventually taken down. I have a Berserker dealing with the Hobbit. So Berserker is very strong. Watch this. One, two, three, four. That still only counts as one. That comes to War Chanted Uruk. We have three of them and the plan is to creep this. I mean, we are caring, of course, about the um, power points too, because creeping is gonna, you know, it's pretty much like ultimate reward. We get experience points, we get power points, but also we get money, which is, you know, all three of that uh, are very important for me because I'm quite behind. And the Rohirrim, luckily for us, couldn't see this, otherwise he was, he would be able to interrupt us from creeping. So I'm gonna lose my only settlement outside, but I've luckily two power points unlocked. Remember, industry got reward in the patch 2.22. Now it's only working on one single furnace, but it boosts the furnace by 300%, which is a rework, it's not a buff, because it gives you the same value, but in this situation, it's actually quite helpful for me because I have only one furnace, and this one is gonna boost me quite a bit, okay? I'm also trying to creep this, I don't care about the work chasing me, and of course Rohirrim can deal with the Berserker, no problemo. In the meantime, Rohan is recruiting more and more uh, you know, Rohirrim, of course, he has three Rohirrim under his control. And I'm just trying to finish off the creep, and Rohan is taking over the map. Luckily, I have a tower coming up here, otherwise this Rohirrim would actually be able to destroy my Uruk pit. So I was able to defend this attack, which is very important, but keep in mind, what makes Rohan so extremely strong in this matchup is the fact that pikes are very vulnerable against peasants. So basically, you can use the farms outside to recruit swordmen, and those swordmen are hard countering our pikemen. You understand the dilemma, <laughs> you know, it's, you basically need to get to mid to lead game ASAP with Isengard, in which we re recruit Lords, make combos, Saruman, upgrades, Warp Riders, and then we can eventually play the game. Until this is gonna happen, we need to play extremely patient and also super careful. So I'm war chanting one more time, my plan is to creep to get even more map control. With war chant, pikes are able to win the 1v1 fight against the peasants, no problemo. But my opponent was already able to creep this. Okay, my eco is looking a bit better, but still not optimal. I mean, you know, it could look much, much, much better, but it's my mistake. But in this game, you know, 
One of the other things I want to showcase you, never give up, never surrender. It is not over until it's over, okay? Look at this. When you have no money for the works, you can recruit the Berserker that can be also a great count to peasants. Watch this. You wanna fight peasants? You wanna play rough? Look at my blade. Imagine if I had a real weapon. <laughs> you look at this, this guy's going on, on rampage, rampage. Beautiful. Uh, I will have also one more settlement behind that's very important for me. In the meantime, Rohan has also Theoden on the field. I forgot about the money on the ground, which is my bad. Armory here for Rohan. And he already has the heavy armor purchased, which is very, very good for him. And it's very, very bad for me. Because my eco is still not looking good. I'm far away from my armory. I'm far away to get to the point in which I can recruit Lourdes. So I am pretty much living minimalistic in this game, okay? And Isengard is a very wealthy faction. It has to be a wealthy faction because everything that we want to do is very expensive. Our heroes, 1400 for Lourdes, 5000 for Saruman, armory, forge plate, heavy armor, you know, banner carrier, fire arrows. It's just too expensive. So we need to get some map control to compensate that. But it's hard in this matchup because he has even now peasants with heavy armor which is gonna kind of counter to my berserker as well i have almost three power points in the bank rohan has one power point because he was going for the heal so luckily for me i don't have to deal with elves anytime soon that's pretty good and would you look at that peasants with draft forge blades and heavy armor you know i'm using my war chant here I i'm trying to fight around my towers Kildin is sporting the peasants, there comes the heal. So I'm deciding now, okay, you know what? I need to kill Theodin because they have too much leadership. So I'm going on Theodin. He was not paying attention for a few seconds. And mounted heroes receive so much damage from the pikemen. As you could see in the example E, okay? Now I attack defended. The peasants, they should be dying to my towers, no problemo. And those plays are important for me. Because that's what needs to happen to get me back into the game. I will have loot now, very good. A bit delete, you know, normally in this matchup I like to recruit Lourdes a bit earlier because Lourdes actually is pretty good against Rohirrim and also of course to the Rohirrim heroes like Theodin, Eoma, you can cripple them and with Pikemen you can easily take them down. But we are falling apart boys, you know, it's so hard to keep any settlement protected. We have now in total 7 or, or 6 furnaces, but the industry is pretty much times 3. So this one is counting as like 3 furnaces. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So basically, our eco, despite the fact that we have no map control, is still not looking too bad. Remember, the, the, there is a huge difference between evil factions and good factions in this game. Evil factions are factions with power points made so you get more money. Mortar is scavenger, industry, devastation. Isengard has devastation, industry, and also fuel the fires. While good factions like Rohan and Gondor, they have summons instead, okay? Nice, so Pikeman hard countering the Rohirrim of course, no problemo, and he's beast rushing me. Here, it's very important to demolish the buildings in time, because the, look, he lost a whole battalion, that's very good for me. Because the sentry towers are very rewarding, they actually give lots of power points and experience points, and if you don't demolish them, your opponent will grow rich in experience points and power points, and I don't need to tell you how important the power points are in this game. Okay. Here I wanted to try to do the same again on Theodin, but this time he was paying attention. My Lourdes is coming and I will be able to keep the outpost protected for now. I mean, the plan is, I know I can't protect this outpost for a long time, but that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to keep my opponent busy. I'm trying to kind of get his attention to the outpost and, to, you know, kind of draw him away from my own castle, which is very important for me because I need time more than anything else. My armory is up on the field. I decided at some point of the game that I need more eco, and for that reason, you can do something with evil factions like Isengard and Mordor, and this is going for the Palantir and the Vestition. The Vestition gives you a great chunk of money at the same time, which you can use to get wealthy for a few seconds, but I think it's important in some, circ uh, in some circumstances, like this one, even though it's gonna delay my reign and also my Balrog later on, but I think if we wouldn't do this, we would not get to this point anyway. So you need to ask yourself, do I really need to do it? If yes, go for it. If you don't need the money, of course, don't do it. Okay, so the outpost is still remaining under my control. I have one settlement outside, but he keeps sending peasants forward, which is super hard for me to deal with. And I gotta be careful that I don't feed my pikemen, you know, to the peasants. It's also very important. I hope I'm not giving too many informations for you guys, you know. I want you to understand my 
uh, thinking when I was playing this game. And now my opponent has Legolas, which actually is a good idea. Legolas countering the Pikeman big time, has a long range, high attack speed, and also quite annoying to deal with. So he will be able to deal with my Pikeman with Legolas, Theoden almost hitting level 3. Towers, they cannot withstand the damage output from the Rohirrim with Theoden leadership, Forge Blades, that's not possible. And my outpost is going to be taken down. But it's fine, because I needed the time to make an army worthy of the White Hand Saruman. Okay, I have Pikeman here. Forge plays and heavy armor, and my Lord is only level one. Yes, combos, and that's a big mistake from me. I didn't expect my pikes to die that quickly. <laughs> they die like they are nothing to the combos, even though I have like forge blades and heavy armor plus warchant. But pikes are just too vulnerable against fire damage, and I will never be able to reach out to this Legolas. And it's a big fail, and I also wasted my warchant during this fight. So it's not the end of the world. I'm going back to my base. Important here is to save your hero. I mean, you know, reviving a hero is gonna take you a minute, which is actually a long time in the RTS game, but also it's gonna cost you money, and money is something, it's like a luxury at this point, we cannot really afford it, you know, that's the problem. I have two combos, I can barely upgrade them, but luckily the Vestigian Industry combination is pretty helpful. There comes Legolas, level 3, keep shooting all the time we have Theoden here. Theoden gives with level 1 leadership to nearby allied units, to horses, and also to combos. He will deal 30% more damage and 50% more armor, which is gonna make them tankier too. So I need to be ready. Unfortunately for me, I have Warchan on cooldown during this fight. Look at the minimap, boys. Rohan is controlling the whole map, and there is little to nothing I can do about the situation until I get wealthier, and I, until I can recruit War Riders in Saruman. So here, I'm trying to stall until my Warchan is back up, but I don't think I will have the time to wait any longer without losing half of my base. And demolishing the buildings, again, is very important. The vestigian is going to be available very, very soon. I have now three combos. He has leadership from um, this dude, but I have no leadership because my Warchan is on cooldown and Lourdes is only level 1. The plan here is to cripple Legolas. Beautiful Hawks right coming in. He's going to summon the Elven Alliance too. My Warchan is almost available. I'm trying to wait for it. And there comes the Rohirrim Charge. Was the perfect timing for the Warchant, which is going to increase our durability by 50%, making us receive less damage from the Trample. And now, the, the focus in this situation are the heroes. You want to kill the heroes. First Legolas, then Theodin. He's going to use the Elven Wood. I have power points for Tainted Land, and it's important to cover this immediately, okay? Now he has to disengage. Because on the, Al on the Tainted Land, not only do I have more armor, but also my opponent has less leadership, or all his leadership bonuses are gone. I have even workers here to support the fight. I'm trying to put Lords close to the combos, as you can see, so you can level up to level 5. And that's a very important power spike, boys, because now we have 60% damage leadership, which is active all the time until Lords dies, and as long as Lords is nearby to the units. I have two, two settlements out, and we need to... Macro is very important when you play with evil factions even more than with good factions, so we need to do multiple things at the same time. Defend, but also expand. So I have a couple of combos. Um, you want to spam combos. You have 500 command points available. You want to keep spamming them. Because at some point of the game, you need two armies. One for defense and one for offense. Okay? I use Palantir. Palantir gives us additional movement speed. Gives us the catch potential. But unfortunately, our units have to stop for shooting. So they will be able to close the distance. But then the archers from the Rohan player, they should be able to disengage. I mean, whole map control pretty much around the bottom side for Rohan, but I was able to claim the map control at the top side. Never give up the map control, boys. Now, that's a big mistake here from me, because the horses with shields and heavy armor and blades, they are just too strong, you know. I have Warchan on cooldown. Yes, my Lourdes is giving leadership, but our Lourdes only gives damage leadership, not tankiness. Luckily, I'm using my sword, using the carnage, and Lourdes is taking care of many, many of these units. Important in this situation is to not lose a whole battalion. You can see I'm trying to save at least one unit from the battalion, so I can send them back to the base, and they can respawn. And when you do this, you can even extend your command points to a farther amount. You can have more than 500 available command points, because the unit, the command points are calculated based on the units, not on a whole battalion. So, for example, a Urukai, which has 20 command points, means each of them are worth two command points, okay? So when you have only one of them remaining, they count as two command points, but when they heal up to full HP, they are counting again to 20. So with that, you can extend your command points. Okay, so I have com combos. Lourdes. 
And I wish I could be able to save up for Saruman, but I don't have the money yet for it, okay? So Saruman is very important. Until Saruman, I need to do this defending action. I cannot really push forward. Because he's preparing to push from the bottom side. He has Legoras here, level almost 5, and 3 Rohirrim. But again, it's hard to break through the defense of Isengard when we have Lourdes level 5 leadership. That's very important power spike. He needs Aragorn leadership, he needs more units. Here he's running to my, to my pikeman, that's pretty good for me. Alright. Look this. Okay. So, this Legolas is quite annoying. So, I will see him very, very soon. And I know I need to take him down. Otherwise, he can keep doing this. And Legolas is a great hero for, you know, farming power points. Very important hero. Has a long range. It's hard to be caught. But luckily for us, we have Lourdes. And Lourdes is as fast as Legolas. But with the Palantir from the spell book, we can make our Lourdes for a short duration run 20% faster. Which gives us a catch potential. So, you use Palantir on Lourdes. You will be able to outrun Legolas and cripple him. And when you cripple him, he's gonna die because Legolas is not a tank. He's a very squishy hero. And again, we are farming power points. I'm looking. He's zooming, boys. Let's go, Lord. Where are you running, dude? Where are you running, dude? Yeah, take this elf <laughs> to D. This is no orc or all you want, my friend Legolas. You have no chance. The cripple lasts for 30 seconds, which is enough time for me to kill Legolas twice. Not even kidding. But it's important to not lose lords in exchange. And we killed the elf. The elf is no more. But he's, of course, a very good player. He's, you know, of course, in the finals. So he's attacking me simultaneously from the other side. He's forcing me to make a choice. Is also Aragorn supporting the army? Does he have Andrew's sword? Nope, he doesn't have Andrew's sword. Which, of course... Would make Aragorn way tankier and way stronger. But in this case, he will use him more as a sport. I mean, even with Anduri's sword, uh, when you have, when you have Lourdes leadership plus Warchant, that's 110% more damage leadership, and Aragorn wouldn't be able to swipe that either. Okay, we have Pikeman in the front. Pikeman combination, so bad trample. And look, I have also Pikeman in the base, combo recovering here o over time, you know. It's pretty, it's pretty good for me. And I also have now the money for Saruman. The White Wizard will be recruited. And for the big fight, which might eventually happen, we will also have the Freezing Ring. So now I'm demolishing one of the furnaces and get a Vork Pit. Which I need. Because Vorks are actually pretty good when it comes to trample down, for example, Peasant Combos. Peasant Yomar Archer combination. They are very vulnerable against, you know, trample damage. Oh look, he's rushing us one more time. But every rush in which he can't achieve anything, we are actually getting a lot of power points. And again, power points will later on lead one of us to Balrog and the other one to EOD. Both of these power points can be game winning. It scared me, dude. <laughs> okay. Look, the Saruman boys. Look, Saruman. Boom, son. You attack my Uruk pit like this? Fight for me and I will hold your O's fulfilled. Okay, so we now gonna fight him with his own weapons, because that's what Saruman does. He lets brother fight against brother, sister fight against sister. Okay? And we will kill it. He will kill our Rohirrim, but basically they were never our Rohirrim, so it's fine. So now I know I have the Freezing Ring available. I have a very strong army. We have one, two, three, four, five com combos, one pikeman. And we have two leaderships, Lourdes and Saruman. And with the speechcraft, we can level them up all the time, every 1 minute and 30 seconds, which is quite underrated. It can snowball because, you know, it's a free experience you can give. That comes the Warchant, Rain, enemy no leadership. We have maxed out leadership. And the Woodland Country, the Wood Country, Rohan has to run. The peasants, they stood in our way for a long time. Where are you running, Aragorn? Where are you going, Aragorn? There is no escape, Aragorn. You will die, son. You can be the king of Gondor, but you are not going to be the king of this game. He's going to demolish everything in time. To, because, again, simple, uh, you know, similar to the sentry tower, the wells and also the statues also give very high command uh, experience points and power points. Boom, son. Dude, I'm telling you, boys. Fireball is so strong, you know. It's like a one-minute cooldown, pretty much like Easter Light. But it's so good against units. It's so good against units, okay? So now in the late game, with multiple level 3 furnaces, with industry and devastation being available every 4 minutes, we get a great chunk of money and we can keep making more army, okay? 
but again you still don't want to miss map control that's very important because map control is important of course for you to make more money but also you make sure that your opponent makes less money so him losing aragon has to be a bigger punishment but when he has a whole map he can simply revive him you know what i mean but when he has no eco he can't do this so that's the reason why map control is so important i know i'm being annoying with mentioning this every single time but it's it's the fact okay so that's a very risky fight for me to take here because I know the leadership is back. There comes the Cloud Break from Rohan. I'm surprised. He should go for the uh, Ants in my opinion. Because Ants you can summon on top of the enemy army. My Tharman is level 7 and Lourdes is almost level 9. We have the Pillage too. So basically Pillage from Lourdes, the Vestation and Industry from the Spellbook, triple money income makers, which is going to be quite hard. In the meantime, he's going to destroy my outpost because I cannot afford to defend the outpost and push. I have no a second army to be split it yet. So I need to make more army. He's committing. It's very important to keep your heroes close to your combos. To give them leadership. That's the most important thing in this game. It's a leadership based game. In which you can make a single unit. Stronger than 5 units. And for that reason it's risky what I'm doing here. Fighting around the statue. But I'm going to do it anyway. Because I know I want to kill Legolas. Legolas. I have like an allergic reaction to him. Every time I see Legolas I have to kill him. And he's going to be dead. Fireball on the Rohirrim. Alvin summon and Saruman is here. Saruman is like, take this, son. And they, get, they don't get one-shotted because the statue is also giving armor leadership. There comes the glorious charge moment. He's targeting my Saruman. My Saruman is being chung, 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 but almost at level 8. Watch this. Bit of Saruman almost available. I'm going to try to control them now with the with the warm tongue. Level 8. Watch, watch, watch. Hell, hell, hell. Boom. Calculated, boys. Just like that. Dude, the new ability from Will of Saruman, from Saruman, with the Will of Saruman is coming in clutch in this game for your boy Shanks. And we needed that, okay? We needed that. Because all this Rohirrim in the meantime are fighting for me. It was a beautiful warm tongue and beautiful Will of Saruman combination. Now, some of you might say, Shanks, Saruman should have a Thunderbolt. But could Thunderbolt do this? Could Thunderbolt save me in this situation? Hell no. Hell no. Okay, we, have, we make more combos. Saruman is going to heal up over time very, very soon. This has two minutes cooldown. So we need to be kind of careful for the next two minutes. Combos, elves. I mean, you can see. In 2.22, you see every single unit. We see Rohirrim, Yeoman Archer, Aragorn, Theorin, Legolas, you know, peasants, Borgs, Uruks, Pikes, Berserker, combos. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, what else do you want from a patch? Mix every unit reliable okay but again it's important because it's not the end product right we are still working on it we know some things need to be improved but it's not a big deal with the new launcher we will be able to do that in no time the new launcher will give you the chance to download and update a whole version within a minute so it's going to be like a up to date and modern launcher okay it's going to be pretty big that comes to the station one more time elves are hidden around the trees but when you get close to them, you can see them. The problem is you cannot catch them with your combos. The elves have the same speed like Urukai, for example. So they are quite mobile. They can get away from every situation. Again, he's rushing my base. But the same situation here. Demolish towers in time. Do not feed power points. And when you do this, he will feed power points to you. Because his units are going to be killed by your towers. And you will get power points from that. Rain available. And Deja Vu, boys. We're going to do the same thing. Rain coming in clutch. Leadership is gone. War chant. And you, you can just run. And Aragorn. Aragorn. Where are you going, Aragorn? Aragorn, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, take this, Aragorn. Take this. No, Anduri. I mean, you can blade master all you want, but very soon, the last of men, King Elisar. Look at him fall. It's satisfying. Am I right or not? Look at the Isengard army unleashed. A new power is rising, and victory will hopefully be at hand, boys. I mean, this finals was quite intense, man. I don't know if you was watching on the on the live stream on Twitch, but if you weren't, why not? You know, why not? You should be watching. That's why we are doing this on Twitch, so you can watch the games on live stream. My money is looking good, and you can see what I was mentioning before is kind of applying also in this situation. We have more command points than we are allowed to. <laughs> I'm not cheating. It's like the game's mechanics, okay? Saruman and Lourdes, the Uruk and the Crater. 
he meets him. You know, he meets him really, literally. Okay? So we have almost 90 power points in the bank. Rohan is up to 5 power points. He still needs 5 more power points for his EOD. While we are only 1 power point. And you know why? Because we demolish buildings in time. We pay attention. Macro is being rewarded. And my army is so strong now. Holy moly. Only EOD can kill this army, by the way. Okay? I mean, the last stand of the Horse Lord, Theodin. Shall we not make peace? Now he's asking us. But Salomon is saying, nah, boy. Nah, boy, look at him. That's how he's looking at this King Theodin. Is the forces of Isengard are gonna, are gonna take care. You have Glorious Charge. You think you are invincible? No, you are not. I get only 56 for killing you because you are not worth much more, King Theodin. <laughs> I'm being rude, but it was an intense game. And would you look at that? There comes the demon of the ancient world on your door. Knock, knock, knock. Who is there? It's me. <laughs> Let's go. It's, it leaves at one, one HP, but when you vault through it, you can kill it. He's gonna fly with his wings, use Ignite in one shot the Citadel made of wood, okay? So. I need to pay attention to multiple things. I want to take map control. I know he has an outpost at the bottom side. But here is going to be the last stand of the Rohan army. He's trying to chunk me, but there comes the Villa of Saruman healing. The last attempt. We have Elves, Legolas, and a bunch of Rohirrim. Can they do this? Can they stop us from conquering Rohan? Hey, boom. But he's catching me with the arrow volley. Look at this. Pew, pew, pew. And my Uruk has been killed for the first time in this game. I have lane 2, my friend. I have lane 2. And Legoras has paid for this. You don't kill my servant like that. You don't kill my fighting Urukai like that. And he's going to leave the game. And that's going to be the game, boys. 1-0. That was the first game. I will also upload the game number 2 tomorrow. So in order to not miss it, make sure to leave a like for this video. And also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And, you know, see you all tomorrow. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always... Stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.